Uh, my name is uh, Ian Walsh. Uh, we farm a mixed farming enterprise in the Great Southern at Cranbrook, just north of Cranbrook. Um, we have 60% uh, sheep and 40% uh, cropping of various sorts. Well, this particular property is very flat and over time it has become more and more difficult to make uh, a profit out of it through water logging and salinity. So uh, we made a decision back in the 1980s with collaboration with the Agriculture Department. We began experimenting with growing salt bush on our Ceylon and waterlogged land. Back in the early days there was very little known about the establishment of salt bush and the method of going into Ceylon land directly with just salt bush was the norm but we soon learnt that that was not the most productive way to go. Uh, over time we've learnt to prepare the land beforehand to put perennials or um, other grasses underneath the salt bush and then establish the salt bush over the top. The idea of this is to give us a good dense stand of pasture because carrying capacity is related to plant density and if you haven't got the density you haven't got the carrying capacity. We've got our tall wheat grass growing here together with rye grass and amongst all that we've got our salt bush. In certain areas we've found that we can carry as many sheep on salt land as what we can on our normal pastures. So it has become a very valuable source of uh, fodder for our livestock, uh, particularly during times of drought, uh, at the break of season, or even extending our green feed going into summer. Uh, one of the things we have learnt is that by increasing our productivity on our sale on land, we've been able to increase our sheep carrying capacity, at the same time not having to cut back on our cropping area. Uh, there's a system we have taken on board for establishing salt bushes by niche seeding. This is a system whereby we sow seed directly into the ground rather than a seedling. The advantages of sowing seed is that it's very cost effective in terms of manpower. It's quick. Um, you can get a variety of different species in there without any trouble at all. Um, the downsides is that it can be hard to germinate. Uh, we can have issues with rainfall uh, not occurring, so thereby the seeds not germinating or germinating too late so they can't establish prior to summer. Uh, the other issues is water logging if it gets too wet. So timing of sowing the salt bush is quite critical. So we try to sow depending on the season from mid-August to mid-September. Uh, this gives the perennials that we've sown as an understory time to establish and also time for the salt bush to get its roots down into moisture before the onset of summer. So it's a similar sowing time to seedlings which are going to have the same issues with water logging and inundation. The seed is mixed with a compound called vermiculite. Uh, this vermiculite is uh, used because uh, first of all it is a bulking agent for the seed uh, so it's easy to distribute the seed at the right rate and vermiculite attracts moisture so the vermiculite keeps moisture around the seed for a longer period of time than the normal dirt that might be surrounding the seed thereby giving it a better chance of germinating. Saltbush seed itself is not salt tolerant so we need to create this environment whereby the seed will have the best chance of survival and germination. This mound we throw up is about 100 millimetres to 150 millimetres high with a V pressed into the centre of it. This V collects water. Uh, it also leaches salt away from the saltbush seed and gives the best chance for the seed to grow. It 
So this is the soil profile. We've got a V in the top here that's used for water harvesting. The water will run down here and then it'll collect around our placement here of vermiculite and seed. What also happens in these mounds is that the salt leaches either through the, through the profile, making it a better environment for the seed to germinate or concentrates on these edges here. So it, it's, that's why it's called niche seeding because it provides a niche ideal for the seed to germinate. The other feature of these is it's not very clear here, but there's a, cr a little crust on the top here, which helps to retain moisture up onto the seed during the germination process. So it's important to get a good tilth on the soil before putting a mound up or else you, you don't get these good solid compaction here. You get air pockets and grass and vegetative matter in here, which is what we don't want. So if the ground's worked up previously to a fine tilth, much as you would in a crop in the full um, cultivation system, that's pretty much how we want it to get a good mound. Salt bush on its own does not have a lot of digestible dry matter per hectare, but rather it is a catalyst to allow other plants to grow underneath it, which is a synergistic type system where the salt bush allows the perennials and annual grasses to grow underneath them by lowering the water table, uh, which is their main function. But the other function of salt bush is that it's very good nutritionally for sheep during the summer particularly for young sheep. It actually allows less supplementary feeding and it provides vital vitamins like vitamin E, vitamin A, which is essential for animal health. So there's going to go pretty well. <laughs> Since we've um, began growing saltbush in the mid 80s, uh, the system has become quite widely adopted throughout the, uh, through the area uh, with many farmers taking up this particular system, uh, finding it very advantageous, uh, first of all increasing their productivity and secondly by lowering water tables. So it helps stop water tables rising to such a point where it can't be cropped. Site planning and preparation are actually paramount to the success of a, of a knee seeding operation. Um, very often salt land has been neglected for many years and it needs preparation before we begin our knee seeding and perennial plantings. Uh, we need to get rid of rogue weeds. Uh, quite often there's a lot of Guilford bulb, which is a major one which will inhibit uh, plant growth over time. And, uh, and rye grasses and those sorts of things. So generally you plant an oat crop or a barley crop one to two years ahead of time um, and using uh, chemicals will get rid of those plants and this is reduces the seed set. It also creates a good tilth for the soil when we actually plant our perennials. In the year of establishment, um, I think the best way is to actually spray the, the area out early in the autumn or mid-autumn, then just leave that paddock until early to mid-August where we can give it another spray to kill anything that's germinated again, uh, usually ryegrass. Uh, we can then uh, work it up with a full cut machine and we need to work it up with a full cut machine because um, this aids first of all in mixing up our, our soil profile which has very often got salt accumulated on the surface. Uh, this helps dilute the, uh, the amount of salt within the soil and helps us to establish our perennials. The second reason for a full cut machine is to create a good mound or else it won't do its job properly. From our initial working up uh, and getting the ground you know, reasonably fine, um, we then sow our perennials using a conventional air seeder, combine, whichever method you choose. And then immediately after sowing the perennial grasses that we have chosen, 
we then sow our salt bush over the top of that using the knee seeding technique. The reason for sowing the perennials first is that we get perennials all over the, the whole site. If we put our mounds in first, we can't sow over the mounds, so we're not getting perennials in those areas. So we're actually increasing our, the density of our perennial pasture over the whole area. Uh, once this has been done, which we normally would have done by the middle of September, we just then keep an eye on pests because our perennial pasture and our salt bush is extremely susceptible to such things as uh, red-legged earth mite or uh, aphids. So if it's established successfully, we're talking about a stand that's going to last 10 to 15 years before we have to touch it again. So it's important to get it right first time. So when planning a, um, a salt bush site, we've got to work out and decide which way we're going to plant our rows and have our alleys constructed. Uh, we've got to work out how many rows we want, whether it be one, two, three, four or more rows. Um, and generally we want the rows in such a configuration as to drain the water off the site because when we construct a mound, by the very nature creates a little drain either side of the mound. And these little drains can be used to channel excess water off the site. Um, what we've found to be the best is probably two rows together, as close as possible. And then we have an alley of between five and eight metres wide, uh, even up to 10, depending on the machine you're trying to get through there. The distance between each plant is about three metres. That's along the row. So for every kilometre of row we have, we have around about 330 to 350 plants or placements per kilometre. To see this land now, it's unrecognisable. It was producing absolutely nothing, now it's highly productive. The sheep uh, enjoy this environment, they do very well on it, providing they are uh, given fresh water uh, is the main one of the main things. Um, in the summertime a little bit of lupins and uh, young sheep do extremely well on this country.